We are tracking two major weather events for this upcoming weekend, flooding and severe weather across parts of the central United States and a relentless dangerous heat dome that's building across the south and southeast. We may see heat indices of excess of 115 degrees this upcoming weekend, while others across the country will face damaging winds and torrential rains. And next week, could a pattern change be in store? As we begin on our Friday night, we are watching an area of severe storms across parts of Kansas into northwest Missouri, stretching all the way over to Illinois. These storms have produced several inches of rain across eastern Kansas as they've been training over the same area. We're getting a lot of Gulf moisture here out of the south. That's helping to provide high P-watt values or precipitable water values across this area. There's not really an upper level low or a front that's passing through, but there is just enough instability across this area with a lingering boundary that's providing just enough lift for these storms to go, and they are training over the same areas, dumping heavy amounts of rain. In fact, as we look here at the accumulated rainfall over the last 72 hours, we see widespread two to four inches across parts of southern Kansas, eastern Kansas, including the Kansas City area, even making its way now into northwestern Missouri, where these yellows and these browns indicate six to eight inches of rain have fallen over the last 72 hours. So the storms are following the same path into far northern Illinois. And so we expect this heavy rainfall and the severe weather to continue as it makes its way into the Great Lakes this upcoming weekend. In fact, when we look at the Storm Prediction Center for our Saturday, we have a marginal risk stretching from eastern Iowa through Illinois, Indiana, all the way to the east coast and across the northern plains through Montana and even down into far northeastern Colorado. The main threat with these storms is not necessarily a tornado, though we could have a 2% chance across the Dakotas into far northwestern Minnesota for our Saturday. That is where we have the best rotation and best vorticity in the atmosphere. But the main threat is going to be hail, especially across Indiana and Illinois, stretching into lower Michigan and northwest Ohio, as well across the northern plains. But the wind, 60 to 70 mile per hour winds are likely as we make our way into our Saturday. And we're looking here at our Cape values. And as we go through the morning on Saturday, those Cape values are going to ramp up. We're going to have excessive values, 3,000, 3,500, where we get those reds up to 4,000 joules per kilogram. So there's going to be a lot of instability. And as we go overnight Saturday, we're going to watch across parts of eastern Kansas, northwest Missouri, again, for the possibility of some heavy rain and severe storms, as the Cape values there will be in excess of 5,000 joules per kilogram. And as we put our future radar into motion here, we're going to watch these storms make their way into the Chicagoland area as we begin our Saturday. They're going to make their way through southern Michigan, northwestern Illinois. But we're going to watch this next line. Do these storms stay discrete? Do they congeal into a line? So right now, this model wants to have widely scattered storms across Illinois and Indiana Saturday night into Sunday. We're going to watch this. We do think the model is underplaying it at this moment given the instability and given that there's still a lingering boundary across this area that stretches from Kansas all the way into northwest Ohio. That boundary is going to provide enough mechanism and then the lingering mesovortices from the earlier morning system will provide that instability. So be weather aware if you are anywhere in the Midwest over the next 48 to 72 hours. And we can see an additional one to two inches of rain as those storms train. You get south of Interstate 70, lesser amounts are likely, generally under a half of an inch. So while these storms are building across the Midwest, it is the south and the east that are facing an entirely different danger, this of the expanding heat dome. This weekend, the core of the heat is centered right over the Tennessee Valley and through the Carolinas. But the worst of the heat values will stretch eastward as they make their way up the east coast into Virginia. Forecast models do suggest that heat indices could reach 115 degrees this upcoming weekend. And so this is our Saturday afternoon highs where we expect the Carolinas to be in the hundreds. We expect upper 90s to near 100 for most places from South Dakota down through northern Texas. But as we make our way into Sunday, this is when the heat really starts to ramp up. 103, most places in the Carolinas will be 103 to 105. 100s in southern Georgia through Louisiana and then up through the Central Plains. 106 through Nebraska, 107. When you combine this with those high heat indices, this is where we're going to have values that could approach 115 degrees. And that heat is going to continue as we go into our Monday, the start of a new work week. That heat starts to shift a little bit to the west, 100s, mid 100s across the south, 108 across parts of Nebraska, 103 for Dallas. And we see those hundreds continuing into our Tuesday as well as our Wednesday. But we're getting a little bit of a change in the weather pattern as we get to midweek with those hundreds being squelched into far south central plains. And we don't really see them across the Carolinas anymore as we have temperatures there in the 90s. Looking at our heat indices, as I mentioned on our Sunday, this is when we're going to see some of the severe heat indexes. 106 to 110 across the southeast, 
109, 108 across parts of Iowa. Then we go into our Monday. We're seeing now one teens pretty prevalent across the northern central plains, down through Louisiana, even back through Georgia. 105 to 108 is not unlikely. And as we go into Tuesday, this is when we think the core of the heat and the highest heat indices are going to be found for the Midwest down through the south central plains. 105 to 115. The Carolinas, you can still be in near 100 with your heat index. So don't think that you're out of the woods. But on Tuesday, we're going to have nearly 150 million people impacted by high heat across the United States. And this is going to lessen as we get into our Wednesday. Again, as the temperatures cool across the northern tier, we're now going to see those high heat indices being pushed a little bit further south. Little Rock, you could be 109. Parts of Louisiana could be approaching 110 for those heat indices. But as we can see here from the heat index map and from that temperature map, we see some cooler temperatures coming across the northern plains and the northern Great Lakes. Is that the sign of a pattern change? And we believe that as we see here at the 500 millibar level, here's that high pressure across the southeast. We're going to watch it slowly start to push a little bit further westward. Here's the core of it across Georgia on our Sunday. It's going to continue to move to the west. And as we get to Monday, it's now over Mississippi. And as we get into Monday night into Tuesday, the core of that's going to continue pushing west into now around Arkansas. And so that pattern change is going to allow the ridge to build across the northern plains. And as we get later into the week, and let's take a look at this on the anomaly map. We see here on our Monday, the core of that high pressure is moving to the west. But what it's starting to do is it's starting to get these buffles and these lines. The ridge is being squeezed westward. It's allowing a big ridge to form to the north. And now we're starting to get a flow out of the northwest into the upper Great Lakes, into the northern plains, into the Ohio Valley. This is going to set the stage for some severe weather as we close out the month of July into August. And across the northeast, you're going to be in a deep trough. So we're going to see cooler than normal temperatures here as we begin the first few days of August. And that pattern continues, a northwesterly flow. This leads to severe weather and strong storms from the northern plains through the Ohio Valley and Tennessee Valleys, while that heat is squelched out to the west as we begin the month of August. It's not going to be a dramatic flip to the cold, but it will be a break for the extreme heat for the eastern half of the United States. So as we close out the month of July and begin our August, we see the northern half of the United States with expected below normal temperatures. In fact, parts of Iowa, you are in the core for that likelihood of below normal temperatures as well across the northeast where we have that trough digging real deep across that part of the country even across southern california into the los angeles area you will be seeing below normal temperatures as that heat continues to get squished down to the south along the southern tier we're going to see above normal temperatures and as that ridge continues to build out west we're going to see above normal temperatures for the pacific northwest this is where we're going to watch for the next heat wave to occur as we begin the month of August. And in terms of precipitation, we're going to see fairly normal conditions across most of the country, though across the central plains as we start to get that northwesterly flow into the Ohio and Tennessee valleys, we can see above normal precipitation. Above normal precipitation for the Pacific Northwest, but through the upper Great Lakes, through New York into uh, New Hampshire and Vermont, we could see below normal precipitation to begin the month of August. And in fact, as we look at the latest drought monitor index, it is the east western half of the United States that is still under the severe and extreme drought conditions. Though we have seen them lessen across far southern Texas, we're not in that exceptional drought, but we do see pockets of extreme and severe drought across southern Texas with this latest drought monitor. This was issued just on Thursday for data through last Tuesday. We see across the plains, across parts of Kansas into Nebraska, where you've seen four to six inches of rain. We don't need that all at once. We're going to see how that impacts your drought condition over the next seven days. So whether it's a flood risk in the plains, dangerous heat in the south, or a shifting pattern next week, there's a lot happening on the weather right now. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next update, especially as we track the next MCS setup and we talk possibly about the weather this upcoming fall and winter. Is La Nina in the cards? Let me know in the comments. What are conditions like near you this upcoming weekend? Stay safe, stay hydrated, and we'll see you again next time here at the Weather Farm.